Hi Noel, uh, my name is Zach and I wanted to ask why Slide Away was the only song that was kept from the Mono Valley sessions. That was just, a, that was the first time we played it and the version that was in Mono Valley was the version, you know, it's, um, it's got that thing, what Supersonic has got. It's like if we ever tried to re-record Supersonic, it wouldn't be the same. It's just a moment in time, it was magic. When you wrote Married With Children, who made the shite music that kept you up all night? I think that might have been something that my girlfriend at the time used to say to me, I'd stay up all night, she had a job, unfortunately, and I'd be up all night listening to music. I'm not saying she uttered that line, but the sentiment probably from her. Was there any inspiration from like Irish music or Irish songs in general um, for the music and the lyrics from Definitely Maybe? I guess the Irish influence is, is heavy in what I do and what we did as a band, because we were all Irish descent. But I couldn't pin it to one particular thing. But there's a rebellious nature to Definitely Maybe and there's a, and there's a defiance to it and there's a defiance and a rebellious nature to the Irish, so. Hi, Noel. If Definitely Maybe was released in 2024, do you think it would get the same amount of hype that it did 30 years ago? I think it probably, I think it would probably do all right because it's, we're still talking about it now 30 years later. So it's got a timeless thing to it. I'm not sure we'd, I'm not sure we'd get past the censors these days. We did swear a lot, I don't know whether you know that. Are there any songs on the album that your view has changed on over time or that you've maybe grown to appreciate more than you when you first wrote it? I guess I've grown more fond of Supersonic but I always loved it anyway. But I think if Push Comes to Shove, that would be my favourite Oasis track, that and some might say. I've not gone off any of the songs. I guess the most throwaway thing on it is Shaker Maker. And that's got a certain charm to it, I guess. But no, I loved it then and I love it now. Hi now, Gallagher. How did you celebrate your 30th birthday? Look at his little face, look. How did I celebrate my 30th birthday? Well, I had a party and it was a huge party. It went on for quite a while, and it was, it was pretty fucking mad. I could tell you lots of libelous stories, but I'm afraid I have to wait for a few people to die. Hi, no, I'm Cristina from Mexico, and I wanted to ask you, who was the first person that you showed these songs to? It would have been the lads in the band. And yeah, how it would have worked was, you know, well, let's take Live Forever, for example, I would have written it, or over the course of a couple of days in India House and then would have gone to the rehearsals and then told each individual member to, you know, you play this and you do that and I'll do this. And then we would have just sang it and then Liam would have done his thing and that would have been it. We would have taped it on a little ghetto blaster and gone, yeah, it's fucking great. We are Lisa. And I'm Jill. And we're from Rockwood, Ontario, Canada. Happy 30th anniversary on Definitely Maybe. <laughs> what is our question, Jill? Why are you wearing a suit? It's not something you see Nolan a lot of the time. Do you have uh, any input into what you guys were wearing on the cover? And if so, why? Was that like a strategic decision? Did you like think, okay, I'm like gonna show everyone I'm the chief, I'm the boss, I'm the head of the band? You're, you're wearing yeah, your hair. Like it looks awesome. Yeah, like it's really good. But yeah, that's so good. <laughs> Why, right? Why? What was that? Was that was that strategy? Just cool outfit. I like the outfit. I like the outfit. I wear it. Thumbs up. Thumbs yeah. Up. Thumbs up. Okay. So, what happened was we got taken into London by someone from Creation who gave us some money to buy clothes. Not sure what you would call the clothes shops, but they certainly didn't sell suits. Everyone was buying like. I don't know, casual wear, I suppose, that we've still not grown out of. I don't know, but I see, <laughs> I see that suit in the shop, in the Paul Smith shop, and spent most of the entire budget on that suit. It was a, it's a Paul Smith Chairman Mao jacket. I'm not sure it's a full suit, the trousers might be jeans. But it wasn't strategic. I just thought it looked good when I tried it on, and I thought, well, buy it. I never even fucking wore it after that. I don't know where it is. <laughs>